This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. F7, page 139, chapter 28, IAS32 and IAS39. Deals with financial instruments, either financial assets or financial liabilities. Now, I don't propose to record lectures on these. The element of financial instruments at F7 tends not to be a, a great feature within the exam. There are examples, example one there on about James issuing a deep discounted bond. The answers are clearly within the OT set of notes and it should be relatively straightforward to uh, check through the calculation. Equity instruments and warrants again. I'm not going through but example two of Zana issuing 300,000 warrants at 10 cents each. Again, I suggest you check the answer at the back of the OT notes. Example 3. Helena issues 80,000 8% convertible bonds. Once again, have a look at it and then check out the answer at the end of the notes. IS 32 and 39 disclosure is quite lengthy, but again, the general principle with disclosure is that it is an information flow. And it therefore follows that anything that you would wish to know about the financial instruments, if you put it down in an exam answer, you're not likely to lose marks on it. I think the important thing with reference to financial instruments, and so far as F5 is concerned, I firmly believe this, is that all of this detail is unlikely to be asked in a question in its own right. Question 1, consolidation, may include a particular financial instrument. It will probably be, have to be revalued at fair value. Question 2, may include a financial instrument. It will probably fall to be revalued at fair value. Question 3, cash flows and interpretation, is unlikely to be a 25 mark question based purely on financial instruments. Which brings us to question 4 and question 5, the 15 and the 10 marker. It's possible that Steve Scott may ask a question based on 15 marks worth of financial instruments, but it's not likely. There's so much else within the syllabus, within the normal reach of an F7 student, that you're not likely to come across it, neither in the 15 nor in the 10 marker. So I'm looking particularly then at page 147, chapter 28. This sets out the uh, recognition and the measurement summary table for both financial assets and financial liabilities. It includes, well, you can read the inclusions, held for trading, derivatives and any other, but the restricted is the category of held for trading at fair value through profit and loss. Held to maturity, investments in debt instruments, but they must be quoted on an active exchange. Loans and receivables is includes obviously loans and receivables, which also includes, be honest, accounts receivable or debtors. These need to be revalued at fair value on initial valuation, and changes in value will go through statement of comprehensive income. But there's not likely to be much change in the accounts receivable, nor frankly in the loans. And an available for sale financial asset is the default category where things which don't fall into held for trading or held to maturity or loans and receivables, they would be included instead in available for sale. Exclusions are here and they exclude in held to maturity, they exclude equity shares, loans and receivables. Equity shares not in here, they're in available for sale. Loans and receivables, in available for sale. Held for trading, that's in held for trading at fair value through profit and loss. And derivatives, also in held for trading at fair value through profit and loss. Loans and receivables excludes instruments quoted on an active exchange. Held for trading derivatives and preference shares. And available for sale excludes held for trading and derivatives. Reclassification is not allowed, neither for held for trading at fair value, nor for loans and receivables. It is acceptable, but unusual, to have a reclassification within these two categories, available for sale and held to maturity. Initial valuation 
Is this difficult to remember? Fair value, fair value, fair value. The only exception then would be the available for sale, which is initially valued at cost. Transaction costs, expense, capitalized and capitalized held to maturity and loans and receivables, and capitalized also the available for sale. Changes in value. Comprehensive income, comprehensive income, comprehensive income. This final one, uh, recognized as equity and then recycled on disposal. Subsequent value. Is it fair value? Amortized cost, amortized cost and fair value or cost for the uh, available for sale financial assets. And with reference to impairment, no impairment uh, for uh, held for trading. Yes, there is impairment and using DCF principles for held to maturity. Yes, and again using DCF for loans and receivables. And yes, again for the available for sale. I think if financial instruments were to come in an F7 exam, I see it most likely as a, a brief explanation of the four categories and maybe an explanation of the initial valuation, maybe subsequent valuations, maybe the inclusions and exclusions. But this table on page 147 does seem to me to summarize nicely and briefly, easily, a topic which you could probably learn. Financial liabilities we have only the two categories. Fair value through profit and loss and held at amortized cost. And again, it should be straightforward. For instance, initial valuation is fair value. Changes in value, comprehensive income. Impairment is not applicable. So this should be allowed, it should be uh, relatively straightforward to, under, to, to learn. Reclassification is the same, it's not allowed, neither into nor out of. The only differences that we do have is a subsequent valuation is at fair value. Whereas amortized cost is at amortized cost or fair value. And finally, therefore, we have just this heading of inclusions. Held for trading or derivatives unless they're hedges. And those classified as fair value through profit and loss. Amortized cost, the default category, everything else. And there are so many examples there. Accounts payable, loans payable, debt instruments and deposits from customers.